Good morning. morning. It's great to be with you all as we continue on this season of Lent. Uh, Without question, Lent is a time where we are preparing ourselves for that incredible day, thinking about our lives and seeing our lives and and the things that we need to improve and grow in our own life. Uh, What a gift that Jesus came down and died on the cross. What a gift that we are those who are not waiting for him to come and restore us. No, we're the ones who Christ is in, that Christ has already forgiven everything, and Christ is the one who helps us transform our lives. And so as we continue our series today, we have a great topic, so we'll dive in as we go. I pray all is going well with you. I'm pretty sure everyone's in a little better mood because the weather is getting better, I'll just say. Um, And I'm excited. Uh, We have some kids coming forward today, our kindergartners. We have some different things going on, and we'll just keep you up to date on everything that's happening here at this church. And certainly, know that God is with us and has his plan for us each and every day. We simply need to keep our eyes and our focus on him. So let's start with a word of prayer. Lord, we come to you this day so grateful for our brothers and sisters, so grateful to gather together in your house, Lord, that we have a place uh, to come. Uh, to give you our time and focus. We thank you, Lord, for a chance to uh, confess our sins, for a chance to come forward and and sing your praise, a chance, Lord, to get into your word, a chance, Lord, to think about these things and how they apply to our lives. Bless this time that we gather together today. Um, Clear our minds from all the distractions and get our attention and focus on you. We give this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, as always, um, we used to always kind of greet each other, and now it's, it, it, we're getting back up to the waving, you know. If you say someone you miss, hey, how are you? We're not quite at the point of making you get up and move around and talk, but maybe you see somebody you don't know, and you'd be like, hey, good to see you. Can't wait to meet you. But I can tell is there's not a lot of masks on today. I think uh, this whole all the things going on, ongoing, continuing reality. It's a continuing reality, and we are here to walk um, and give God the glory no matter what we face in this life. And so uh, look around, wave at someone, come on. There you go, say hello. All right, I'm just trying to get you ready because I'm going to have you guys get up again someday. So just getting you ready. All right, let's begin. Please stand as we begin with song.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Almighty Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, in his incredible mercy, sent his one and only Son, Jesus Christ, to die for you. It is for his sake that he forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I simply proclaim this truth to you. Your sins are forgiven. Go in his grace, go in his peace, go in his joy. Let's pray. Lord, we give you thanks and praise for being the God who sees all the brokenness in our lives. You are the God where we can hide nothing from. You are the God who has told us exactly what to do, and yet we follow our own path. And Lord, what a gift that through Jesus Christ you look upon us not as those who are rejectors rejecting you, but instead, Lord, you look upon us as saints, perfect and holy in your sight, because in Christ our sins are forgiven. In Christ we are purified and made whole. And Father, we give you thanks and praise for the incredible gift that Christ has won for us. And we pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with the reading of God's Word. The Old Testament reading is from Jeremiah, the 26th chapter. When Jeremiah had finished speaking all that the Lord had commanded him to speak to all the people, Then the priests and the prophets and all the people laid hold of him, saying, You shall die. Why have you prophesied in the name of the Lord, saying, This house shall be like Shiloh, and this city shall be desolate without inhabitant? And all the people gathered around Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. When the officials of Judah heard these things, they came up from the king's house to the house of the Lord and took their seats in the entry of the new gate of the house of the Lord. Then the priests and the prophets said to the officials and to all the people, This man deserves the sentence of death because he has prophesied against this city, as you have heard with your own ears. Then Jeremiah spoke to all the officials and all the people, saying, The Lord sent me to prophesy against this house and this city all the words you have heard. Now therefore mend your ways and your deeds, And obey the voice of the Lord your God, and the Lord will relent of the disaster that he has pronounced against you. But as for me, behold, I am in your hands. Do with me as seems good and right to you. Only know for certain that if you put me to death, you will bring innocent blood upon yourselves and upon the city and its inhabitants. For in truth, the Lord sent me to speak to you, sent me to you to speak all these words in your ears. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The epistle is from the third and fourth chapters of Philippians. Brothers, join in imitating me and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. For many of whom I have often told you and now tell you even with tears, walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction, their God is their belly, and they glory in their shame with minds set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will tra transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him even to subject, subject all things to himself. Therefore, my brothers whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm thus in the Lord, my beloved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please rise for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 13th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. And he said to them, Go and tell that fox, Behold, I cast out demons and perform cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I finish my course. Nevertheless, I must go on my way today and tomorrow and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet should perish away from Jerusalem. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it, how often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you would not. Behold, your house is forsaken, and I tell you, you will not see me until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. So kids, during the time today of the message, we're going to give you something a little different. Does any of you know what this is? Nope. Nobody knows what this is? What do you think? A pipe cleaner. Wow, there's a smart kid. Do you know this is a pipe cleaner? You know, when they have pipes, they get dirty, and they slide this into the pipe, and they kind of brush it, get it all clean? Well, today, we're going to be talking about the great pipe cleaner uh, of our lives, and certainly, I want you guys to come forward and get one of these, and I want you guys to, uh, as you listen to the sermon, kind of, maybe you want to turn this into uh, something of a pipe that you want to clean in your life. Sometimes you want to talk about what it is that cleans the pipe. You can take one or two of these, um, but kids, if you'd like one of these, something you can do in the sermon to get ready, come on forward, and you can grab one or two. What? I don't know if I have enough. Oh, there we go. <laughs> you can grab one or two. Think about things that you want to get better in your life, things you want to clean. Think about the pipe cleaner of our life. Get the right color. Yeah, smart. You got it? All right. <laughs> you got it all? All right. We will continue with our sermon
Well, as we continue forth our series for this time of Lent, Life with Christ, one of the whole goals of those series is taking a look of ways for us to see things in our life that we can grow in, to know that the God who's forgiven us all is the God who seeks for us to see ourselves clearly and grab hold of the God who is with us in many things. And as you may have read in the bulletin, I get the great topic of <sighs> tough topic, lament. Now, it talks the laments of Jerusalem, and I think that's a big deal that Jesus is hitting, as we read in our gospel, this lament of Jerusalem. And I, I love that word lament. I don't know how many of you know the word lament. Do any of you know kids? Do any of you know what that word lament means? Any kids? It's not a word we use a lot, I'll say. And when we talk about that word lament, I, I always like looking in a dictionary. To lament means to cry out grief. Ugh! In fact, one of the other definitions says this, to ex express sorrow. Lament. To express, I, I love this concept. This is not feeling lament. Lament is verbally crying out. Lament is something that's not just what you think and feel. Lament is how you express the sorrows and the struggles that we face in this life and in this world. And I'm pretty sure I could ask if any of you have ever lamented, and I'm pretty sure I'd get some, some hands. Um, but I will say, Jesus himself lamented. All right? In John chapter 11, Jesus had one of his dearest friends, Lazarus, die. And you have this moment where Jesus comes before Lazarus and is crying, crying before the one whom he loves so much. There are things that happen in the world that lead us to sorrow. And, and it's not hard to discover. Some of them are, are a lot of basic things in our life, but some of them are so big it's hard not to lament. When the rain comes down and destroys areas, the, the, the wind is blowing so hard and, and there are people who lose their houses and people who are running for their lives in the weather that comes. And we lament for them. And then, of course, <laughs> there's the earthquakes that shake the ground, destroy entire cities. And in those moments, it's easy to, to lament for the people in their struggle. We know the wars, all right? The people of Ukraine running from their house. And there's so many things like this in the world that happen that are so large, so big, you can't just fix them. There's no easy way to just, oh yeah, I'll help you, it'll be all right. But we lament these huge things that happen in the world and happen in our lives. There are even things in our lives that we lament. And I will say, and this is quite a statement, for as much as these things are big things in our life, even losing someone that we love so dearly, dealing with death, there is, as we read our text today in Luke chapter 13, that lament is something even worse, something even more devastating than death itself. Now, before we dive into that text, I kind of want to get a little bit about lament in the Old Testament for the same things that Jesus is lamenting in Luke chapter 13. I know often you guys, you have your Bibles and you, you kind of flip through your books of the Bible and then you get to this um, Jeremiah uh, Lamentations, Lament, Ezekiel, these books of the Bible which very few people read, you know, it's not the ones that people generally know. These are things going on 
among the people of God, as, as we read. And these are pretty powerful realities because these are the times where God has stopped sending people out saying, hey, turn and I will forgive you. Stop this path that you're on. I'm trying to help you. He's been doing that for years with the nation of Israel, for years trying to help them see their direction, see they're their, their killing themselves, and instead grab hold of the one true God. And they are not doing it. And when you get <laughs> to these three books, it's a pretty difficult thing. Jeremiah is a prophet who God sends out, and he tells Jeremiah, when he sends him out, he says, uh, no one's going to listen to you, Jeremiah. Isn't that great? To know you're going to go and tell people, hey, you need to turn. Hey, people, get things right. And God tells them, I'm sending you to say these things, and no one's going to listen. And Jeremiah is not there to say, hey, if you turn, things are going to be all right. Jeremiah is now talking about the things that are going to happen, that this nation is going to fall. Ezekiel happens at the same time as Jeremiah, right? This is around 600 B.C. This moment where these Jeremiah and Ezekiel, these two that are out there trying to wake the people of Israel up, both of them are captured and taken away and put into slavery by the Babylonians. And then in 580 something the nation of Israel falls and they they are there to warn them and tell them this is going to happen and then they're there to help them when everything falls apart I love Ezekiel I'm going to be doing a study on Ezekiel here at the once we get past uh, the Easter time we're going to start Ezekiel because it's it's a tough one it's a book where God says, say these things because these people, these people don't listen. These people are not open. But I want you to say these things. And this is a big deal because we talk about lament, we talk about lamentations. I don't know if you've ever read that book. It's a book that many people don't read, and I'll tell you why. It starts with ugliness. People are in ugliness as they were in this time, feeling terrible and bad. And then it kind of works its way up, and people are calling on God and having hope that God has made a promise to them. And then the book goes on and talks about the ugliness that they're in again. People always struggle with that. Why would, how, where's the good news in this? And it's really designed that way. I don't know if you, you understand. It's a great thing. You ever read the book of um, Lamentations? Know that this book is is kind of an artistic book, um, when you read verse 1, it's the exact same as what you're reading in the very last book. And then verse 2, and it's, it's kind of a repeat of what it's saying because they're seeing this perfect center as the perfect answer. So trust me, if you ever read that book and like, I don't understand how I can end up so ugly, well, it's designed that way with the perfection in the center. Um, we, as God's people today, we're glad Jesus has come, right? Jesus has forgiven us. It's a good thing that we're just living in that upper middle section, right? Except we're people forgiven by God who are also living in a world with bodies that still are filled with sin. With our, so there is these realities for our life. Now, what makes this so big? What makes this such a big issue why is this bigger than even death itself? Because Jeremiah, Ezekiel, these are men turning to the people of God who have turned from God. And while these bodies will all die someday, we are blessed with God that there is life there is life of joy and peace after death. And this is what the world rejects. The very gift of God and forgiveness. That's what the nation of Israel reject. And so as we get into our text today, 
in Luke chapter 13, it's, it's a pretty difficult situation. Jesus is in Jerusalem, and again, those who are against him kind of come up and say, hey, you know, uh, the king is about ready to kill you. You better get out of here. And Jesus says, I'm not getting out of here. I'm not getting out of here. And then he says these fascinating lines. And I am here today to cast the demons out of people, to set people free from the devil who has grabbed hold of their hearts and their life. I am here to heal the sick and the wounded. I'm the God who has come here to bring people hope in this world, in the challenges that we face in this world. And then he says, in three days, all will be fulfilled. Now, I think you know what he's talking about. Jesus is telling them, these things I'm doing are helpful for now, but I am going to come, and I'm going to die on the cross for a world that doesn't even give me attention, for a people who reject me as their Savior, as their God, as their Creator, as the one who is with them, and they don't want Him with them. It's a powerful thing. And then he, he moves into, this is a very famous, O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who have killed the prophets, you who have just, God comes and speaks to you and you just toss him aside. Jesus himself, I'm God, come down to speak to you, to help you, and you, you're going to put me on a cross. You're going to reject the Savior of the world. You're not even going to reject him. You're going to try to eliminate him. It's a powerful reality. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. And he says this, I, oh, the Father is out there who just longs to put you in his arms. Like, like a sheep, or not a sheep, but like a, anyway. Uh, so I just, like an animal, like a mother just wants to gather you together, to walk with you, to carry you through, but you will not. And when we talk about bad things in the world, there's a lot of bad things in the world. But the worst of the worst of the worst is we live in a world where many people, God reaches for them. God promises them forgiveness. God longs to help them get things right in their life. They don't want anything to do with it. They just want to forget the fact that there is a Creator. They just want to go into atheism, or they want to go into agnosticism and say, oh, it doesn't really matter, whoever God is, whatever, I'm just going to ignore him. There are huge things that go wrong in the world, but some, some are not just worldly. They are eternal things, and as Christ came to save us eternally, the world laments. We lament at our dis, our rejection of that God. As Jesus goes on, he says this, and he's saying this to those who are going to reject them. He says, you will not see me until the day that you proclaim, right? The day that you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. What he's saying there is very simple. Jesus says, look, you may reject me. You may never accept me in this world. But the day that I return, the day that I come back, those who are going to heaven and those who are going to hell, all will stand before me and bow before me. He's not saying, oh, I'm going to save you all no matter what. He seeks to save the whole world. But he wants people to know God is God. And there is a moment of time where finally the world will bow before him. I love it. It says the same thing in, in 1 
uh, Peter is doing that study. We just talked about that today. Every knee will bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. Those who are going to heaven and those who are going to hell, all will recognize the God who made the world, the God who gave His life to pay for the sins of the world. There's a moment coming where all will do it. And so this is not a real joyful sermon so far. It's a time of lament. And as we are in this season of Lent, I thought this would be a good thing for us to do, not just to talk about lament, but to spend some time in a prayer of lament. Now, I'm pretty sure most of you have never done a prayer of lament. (laughs) <laughs> you know, we've done prayers of confession. We've done prayers of honoring the God who made us. We have prayers where we talk to God and share our desires for God. But what I'm going to do is we're going to take some time, and we're going to do a prayer of lament. And I'm just going to pray things and give a little silence for you to lift things up as well. we got five things we're going to hit. We'll just kind of do one, and I'll give a little moment for you in a second. Uh, first of all, Certainly, we are going to pray for the lost, the people who have rejected Jesus. And there's a lot of people in our lives who have rejected the God who wants to rescue them. Secondly, we're going to pray for the world in which we live. There's a lot of things going on in the world. Then we're going to pray for America, our country. Then we're going to pray for our church, church, churches, our church, other churches. And then we are going to pray for ourselves and people in our lives. And not just pray for, but lament. I know, everyone's like, whoa, that sounds a little weird. Well, are you ready? So let's bow our heads and give our attention to God. (sighs) Lord God, Heavenly Father, we come to you this day grieving, grieving. wishing for the change of the many in our world who have lost sight of you. Lord, in a world that seems to, doesn't even want to talk about Christ anymore. A world, Lord, that you died to forgive in a world that simply ignores you. People in the world that don't even have you in their thoughts and in their heart and in their mind the one who created them, the one who gave them everything. And Lord, we grieve. We grieve over their lives without Christ. We grieve over their struggles that they faced without answers. We grieve for the world that continues to grow in suicide without Christ, in a world that grows in anger without Christ, in a world that grows in all the wrong directions. Father, thank you that you are the God who loves them. Lord, we grieve that they do not know you yet. We grieve, Lord, that that they turn from you. We pray for these people, people in our lives, in our families. Father, we turn to you and pray for this world in which we live. Father, a world that is filled with brokenness. Lord, we pray um, for the Ukraine under attack, the wars that are created by those who simply want to control everyone else. We pray for our world, Lord, with the weather seemingly constantly changing and madness that we face the difficulties. We pray for our world, Lord, where many parts of our world Jesus is not even allowed to be talked about. We pray for the world, Lord, where so many are trying to control everything.
Father, we come to you and, and to pray for our country, Lord. You have blessed this country so incredibly. Uh, Lord, we, have, we are so blessed and we don't give credit to you for it at all. In fact, Lord, we almost reject you. We're a country, Lord, who has in our constitution, you know, that this is God in our presence, and now people define that as just sort of an allegory trying to describe other things. Father, we pray for our country, which doesn't believe in you. It's not lost sight of you. A country that thinks its ways are better than the ways of the word. Lord, we pray for your church. Lord, we know that so much the body of Christ doesn't seem very much like one. And we know, Lord, that without question there are some who are more into politics than they are into sharing the truth of Christ. We know, Lord, there are many churches who have twisted the scriptures and make it say what they want it to say instead of listening to the very word of God. And Lord, as we look at others, we look at ourselves. Sometimes we get so arrogant that we've got things right and everyone else has got things wrong that we don't even see our own sins, see our own misdirections. Father, the people who claim the name of Christ, we are those as followers of Christ, and yet we put this all, we shame the truth of God by not living it out. Lord, we know ourselves. There are many things that we hide from other people, but we hide nothing from you. We're grateful, Lord, for the gifts that you have given us, the blessings that you have given us, and yet we often don't give you the credit. We are a people, Lord, who are broken, people who claim that we are slaves to sin and don't even try to get out of the problems that we have in our life, people who have their preferences, their desires above God. Father, we simply lift up our griefs to you. Lord God, we know that lament is not an easy thing. Being honest and real about the brokenness of this world. And yet, what a gift, Lord, that the time of lament is a time looking back at the past, looking at the present that we're dealing with now. And yet, Lord, we, when you lament, we are not thinking about the future. And what a gift that Jesus Christ has won for us, something we don't deserve, that Jesus Christ is the one who comes out of that future and into our present to help us transform and change, to help us set ourselves free, to change the world in ways that we do not have the power to do. Father, we give you thanks. We don't walk in lament, but we keep our eyes on what is to come. We keep our eyes on the God who forgives the people who can't even forgive themselves. The God who died for the people who will not even acknowledge his existence. And Father, we thank you. We thank you that despite our mistakes, despite our failures, despite our world, Lord, that you love us, that you're with us, that you help us through the griefs that we bear. 
And Lord, you bring to us the peace of God and the joy of Christ in the midst of a broken life, of a broken world. We give this all to you in Jesus' name. Amen. I like it. Kids were crying, getting the lament going for us. At this time, I... Oh, yeah, we've got the kids who did... Did you guys come up with what you, should, what you did with these... Uh, what do you, bring it forward. Tell me what you did with it. Come on. Bring it forward. It's okay. What'd you get there? What'd you do with it? Ooh, it's nice. A toothbrush. Yeah, let's clean. That is brilliant. I should put that in the sermon. That was good. What'd you get? What'd you do? Oh, yes, yeah, very nice. Right there on your finger. A cross, yes, that's very valuable. When we lament, we need the cross. Good job. Oh, what'd you do? A house. Oh, very nice. I like that house. Which which room's your room? Oh, okay. Well, thank you. Good job. Well, certainly our God is a God who gives us hope in the midst of the struggles and the challenges that come. He is the God who even reaches and saves the lost. And while we lament about these things, we trust in the God, the God who brings us joy, the God who brings us peace, the God who hears us when we're honest with Him, and the God who says, let it go. I love you. So please stand as together we say the creed which our Lord has taught us. Our Father, I mean, excuse me, <laughs> I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, Father Almighty, and hence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Now, one thing, I'm going to have the kindergartners and their parents come forward. We have something for you today. So come forward with parents. And then where is, oh, there she is. She's here. So you guys, it's kind of a good combination today because we know we just spent a little time in prayer, and prayer is something we are really excited to teach you guys about. And so we're going to give you something. Let her explain it all. So, so um, this is dry erase marker and a little uh, calendar for the week. Our prayers for the week, and you guys can write down what you would like to pray for on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And then starting the next week, this will just erase, and you can start all over again and see how God is answering your prayers, or maybe making you wait a little bit on your prayers, all right? And um, so this is our gift to you, all right? And this will erase, all right? So we're hoping that you, mom and dad, will think of ways that you can pray for others, pray for yourself, pray for our world, okay, and, and do that together. So what we're going to do, since we gave that to you to help you learn and begin to pray and turn to God, I'm going to say a prayer for you as you start this. So we'll get you all bow your head. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much that you are the God who is there to hear us, to hear us give you thanks and praise, to hear us ask you questions, to hear us, Lord, just look to you and know that you are the God who loves us so deep. Be with these kids and with their moms and dads and brothers and sisters and allow this time to give them that very peace of God, to give them hope and direction as they turn to you, the God who loves them both, all of them so much. And we pray in Jesus' name.
So are you guys excited? Yeah, it's good when you get to learn to pray. So you guys can go ahead and sit down. And now let us turn to the Lord our God in prayer. I'm going to have everyone stand. <clears throat> Lord God, Heavenly Father, certainly uh, you have heard our laments, and we simply come to you in our time of prayer to give you thanks and praise for being the God who is always there to hear our prayer, for being the God who is greater than our struggles and, and stronger than our weakness, to be the God who is there for us in all the challenges that we face in this life. Father, certainly we, we pray for our congregation here. We pray for those who are dealing with health issues. Um, we pray for those who are grieving the loss uh, of people that we love. We pray, Lord, for the relationship struggles. We pray for the parenting struggles, Lord. We pray for all the challenges that this broken world has. And we simply, Lord, turn it to you. Allow us, Lord, to, to turn it to you and know that you are the God who's there. Um, we give you these prayers, Lord, because we trust in you and we walk with you day after day. Father, be with us and allow us to be a people of prayer, a people who, um, in the midst of our struggles, know where to turn. Um, Father, we thank you um, that you're the God who hears us. We thank you, Lord, that you are the God who speaks to us through your word and sometimes, Lord, speaks to us through your spirit that we have um, your presence with us wherever we are. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of the Lord our God. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord fill you with joy. May the Lord help you see your sorrows. And may the Lord help you turn to him in prayer every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Remain standing for our closing hymn.
You may be seated. Just a few announcements for you. Um, we've kind of put this up. You can go online and look at it as well. Just kind of updating what we as Lutherans are trying to do for the Ukraine. There are opportunities for us to help. There's a website. Uh, certainly you can go on to the I, uh, LCMS org website and get some information. I think a lot of people want to help and it's hard to know what to do and so there are things and you can read a lot about it. I've got it up in some different places here so check it out. Also today, this is at 2 o'clock, this is the class for the 6th grade confirmation students. 6th um, grade, so if you have a 6th grader, it's our confirmation class today at 2 o'clock just to remind you um, as we kind of move forward. And last but certainly not least, um, we have an event coming up that's a, a really good one, Father-Son, all right? And it's just a, a day event um, from 9 to uh, 5, and certainly um, it's a great event where we go into a camp place, and certainly there will be a lot of ways to really talk about what does it mean to truly be a man of God. Uh, this is for kids in Sec first grade through eighth grade. And so it's going to be a great time for father-son time and father-son together in the Lord. There's lots of fun things at the camp we're going to. Um, there's sign-ups online and things like that. So if you are interested, check it out. If you have questions, bug me anytime. But um, certainly we'd love to know who's going. So go online and sign up, um, those of you who have kids of that age. And I will stop... <laughs> Sorry. Um, hope you have a great day. Um, don't get stuck in the lament, right? We, we talked about lament. It's important. I think there, some of you are, are in times of lament. But no, thankfully, we have the God who is always there to rescue us. Have a great one. Oh, wait, we got to say our line. We are going deeper in faith.